Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, let's talk about set state. So we talked about stateful widgets before, but we didn't really have any interactivity. And that's the whole key behind a mobile application, right? So let's talk about that. I'm going to change the stateless widget a little bit more. Um, what I'm going to say is material app and the home is going to be migrate state. So notice that I changed the scaffold from up here to down here. And the reason behind that is because I want to have some type of functionality, some method to actually be able to interact with it. And that's what we have to use is a, what we call a state. Um, so uh, let's do that. And so here the class migrate state hasn't changed and state of the union is going to be right down here. And notice it's changed a little bit. I'm going to have a new scaffold and the properties are going to be navigation bar, new text, words on bottom, but the string words on bottom is going to be right here. So it's going to be hello. I'm also going to have a floating action button and say new raised button. And it's going to be right here on pressed do something and the child is press me. All right. So in flutter, uh, what certain buttons have certain capabilities. So in other words, certain frame of certain widgets, excuse me, um, have certain abilities um, and built in methods. With floating uh, with new raised button on pressed is built in. That doesn't exist for all widgets here. So it's unlike um, like Angular or web programming in general because you know you could just have any type of element and add a you know function to it saying do something or do something else. Right? This one it isn't. You actually have to have a widget. You can have a functional widget to do something else, but you you need to have the underlying characteristics of being pressable and you can't just artificially make it pressable. All right. At least I've not seen that the case and I'm pretty sure that's actually true. So because new raised raised button does have the on pressed ability, we'll do that. And so we'll put the method down inside of here. What my purpose is, I want it to say hello, but if I click the press me, it's going to change the hello to goodbye or bye. All right. What I could do right inside of here is Again, in web application, I would probably open up a stream, listen for it, and when I make a change, it changes here. Flutter is different. You don't open up streams. Maybe that's how it's implemented in the back end. I actually don't even know. But what it is is that it's a set state. So what happens here is that um, the um, it is a certain condition, and when you change it, the system will not automatically know to change it. So if it says, do something, and I said words on bottom equals buy, the Flutter framework would not know, oh, redraw this to say buy. It wouldn't do anything. It wouldn't change. So by setting state, it's a, if, if you change it with the set state method, it's going to say, oh, wait a minute. Something has changed inside of here. Therefore, I'm going to have to redraw it because you change the state. Right. So it's a different from listen where it's probably taking up memory. And I wonder if that's why we use the set state to, to minimize on the memory usage. But it says set state changes. Go ahead and redraw that. So here it's going to see set state. And this is an anonymous function right here, right there. And it's going to say if words on bottom equals hello, change the words on bottom to equal by and otherwise words on bottom equals hello. So if it's hello and I click on it, it's going to turn into by. Since it doesn't equal hello right now, it's going to change it to hello. All right. So, so that's all we're doing. So what, what the Flutter framework is doing is I press it. It changes the state. The set state triggers the Flutter framework to say, oh, redraw this right here or actually right here. Redraw that so that this text right here is going to change in and of itself. So I hope it's coming together a little bit. It is for me at least. I'm starting to see like a tree. Here's the root widget right inside of here, and it starts branching out. And depending on where you want to put the functionality, you put it in child widgets or sub widgets. This is not really a child widget, a sub widget to the um, stateless widget. And it keeps going down. Actually, it kind of is a child widget because it's right there. So, so um, and it keeps going down the line depending and it could branch off. So if you want it instead of a new text, you can have another different custom widget, which of course in and of itself could be a stateful widget and it can keep branching out from there. So now we're starting to see not just the display, but we're, we're noticing the, the functionality, the structure, and let's keep going. So super primitive right now. Let's advance a little bit more as time goes by. Thanks.